Well, today on Nation, a window cleaners podcast, we are all going to talk about hiring. I know it's time of the year to hire. Maybe it's your first time hiring. Maybe you've hired a bunch and you're trying to do it better. But either way, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What is up? If it's your first time here, have a look around. Hopefully this podcast doesn't suck all that much, and hopefully you get something from it. Uh, It's anywhere podcasts are found uh, if you want to listen. We're also on YouTube. A few quick shout-outs to some of the awesome people who use me as their rep. Aaron Harstead, what's up? Cheryl Neeland, what's going on? Uh, And Brett Bailey, of course. Uh, You guys are awesome. Just a couple of the people who... uh, genuinely are amazing so just wanted to give you guys quick shout outs but we are talking all about hiring now maybe you've hired before maybe you've never hired maybe you don't know if it's time to hire maybe you've hired and you're like this hiring thing sucks I want to do it better there's lots of things about hiring that kind of suck and lots of things that could be improved on and hiring is just that Hiring is always going to be a bit of a chore. There's right ways to do it, just like anything, and there's wrong ways. So hiring is one of those things that if you decide that you ever want to be bigger than what one person can handle, it's necessary, right? You can't have a million dollar business with one person. It's just we trade time for money and there's just not enough time or we can't charge enough money to get there. So if you want to get there, hiring is a necessary evil. Um... I like hiring. I I don't mind the process, but it is just that. It's a process, right? And uh, if you guys have seen any of the podcasts that I've done, you know I'm an ABH fan, always be hiring. If you're in a service business, I just feel like you have to have that rotation because there's, you know, people coming in, there's people going out, there's people leaving, and you don't get back a day that you can't work. So if everybody left you right now, you're not going to work today. If you're not going to work today, you lose the money to kind of be able to get that day back. You'll never get it back. So hiring is something you have to do and do regularly. But there's a few ways that you can hire that make it a lot easier. Now, I'm going to start off by just if you've already hired before and you're not wondering about this, I'm going to talk about when it's time to hire, like what kind of triggers that. This will also touch on you because you may be needing to hire another person. You're trying to figure out if it's like time to hire another person or what. And I'll tell you right away, it's all about efficiencies. If you are absolutely as efficient as possible and you still have more work, then it's time to hire. If you are as efficient as possible and you still have more ambition to get more or be bigger it's time to hire. And I'll tell you efficiencies is not an efficiencies podcast. I talk about it a lot, but if you're working and all of a sudden you get into water fed, all of a sudden you, you know, uh, tighten up your schedule on where they're driving. Now you can get more work done with this. You want to make sure that your crew that you have, be it just one person or just you in general, it is as tight as possible before you hire. Because a lot of you Unfortunately, you're not efficient, but you just keep hiring because you're like, well, we can't get any more. We, we got more stuff. We got, to, but you're like losing that track of okay. Well, let's get what we have efficient and make it okay. With that being said, if you are working and you got your again, we're in winter, but if you're there at about that forty hour week, and you still just have tons of work or you're booked out six weeks or whatever, and it's just solid it's time to hire, right? Shrinking that number down of how far out you are is going to be better because then you can pack things in. You can get people done in a more uh, convenient for them timing. When you're getting into winter, not coming out of winter, it's nice to have those pushed out because then you can fill in some of the slower times. But once you hire, it's your job to get work for those people to be hired. Now, If it's your first time ever hiring somebody, and it's just you right now, you're doing 40 hours a week, you hire somebody, they got 40 hours, awesome. But now your job, what is it? If you're not cleaning, it's to sell the work. It's to do all the other pieces, right? 
it's the website, the SEO, the, all that stuff. Put it all together, all the marketing and advertising to get more work so you can hire more people. As soon as you get off the truck, all of a sudden everything changes to now your job description is getting the work for everybody else, right? If you already have crews and you're adding on, now you're adding, say you have, you know, 100 hours a week. We'll say 80 and it's easier for the 40 hours. <laughs> I'm not good at the maths. So you got 80 hours of work. And if you have two people, they each do 40 hours. Great. If you hire somebody else on, now everybody has to drop hours to split hours. You have to build that back up right away or you got a lot of people hired for something that two people could do. So it all comes back to you and what you do. Now, this isn't just you having to go out and talk to one person to get one job. Like I'm talking, this is now your job to market, right? It's your job to orchestrate everything. It's your job to marketing calendar and get that ads done and put something out there every single day to get the phone ringing and keep the phone ringing. But it's your job to bring in the work. Now your job is to feed hours to the people who are doing the work. And that does not change as soon as you hire. You could have 100 employees or you could have one employee. Your job as the business owner is to create a business that can feed hours to the employees. So keep that in mind as you start hiring, that is now a change. It's your job. When it's time to hire, it makes sense. And I'll tell you right now, one of the big holdups that people have in hiring which is like the second hardest thing people do from going from like having a job to being an entrepreneur. That's the hardest jump usually. Second hardest is hiring. People go, well, if I pay this person $40,000 a year, whatever that number is, if I pay them that, man, I, I know what I'm making right now, 40,000, like I don't know, I have an extra 40,000. Okay, so what you're doing is you're making the math sound scary because you're doing the math wrong. What you're doing is taking somebody's 12 months and putting it into today. With that, you have to look at it and go, okay, 12 months from now, where's the business gonna be? If you're hiring somebody, it better be bigger than it is now. You have to go sell this stuff. That, that's what you have to do. If your business from now till 12 months from now is the exact same size and you hired somebody, you, you didn't need to hire somebody, right? Then why would you free yourself up if you're not gonna go do other things to get the business bigger, right? So when you look at that, you're looking at how much can I pay them now, but really it's how much can I pay them in 12 months? So don't let that be a holdup where people are like, well, I don't know that I got you know an extra 40 grand to pay, like that's, that's really gonna tap me out. Right now, yeah. Yeah, but at 12 months, 40 grand is, that could be one big account. That could be a few little accounts. That, that will be the growth. They'll pay for themselves, right? The thing with an employee is that in any business, an employee will make a part of the amount of money made. Now, what there has to be is there has to be amount for them there has to be an amount for the costs involved in them doing the work. There has to be an amount for marketing, which is to get more work. And there has to be an amount to pay overhead, including others' payroll. If you have admin, somebody who's working in an office, they're not making money. They're not earning you money. They're not actually cleaning the glass to make that money. So they have to be paid from somewhere. That's why when people kind of look at this and they go, well, you know, all these other guys are out there charging way less than me and I gotta, you have to charge it. You have to charge to have a real business. There's a difference, right? So even if you hired somebody, they will always be making, if your pricing is right, they will always be making enough to pay all the expenses to do it themselves and you to do it. So when you're like, man, I don't know, I'll just lose all that money. No, you'll get more work. It's a big holdup on employing people in general, right? Especially when you get into like your first time hiring or admin work where it's really a big kind of mind changing thing really to kind of, you know, fine. So don't be held up that way. But if you are gonna hire, how do you find really amazing people? That's the key. Hiring sucks because there's 
a lot of people out there who, uh, as Tosh, Daniel Tosh said, the, the shocking thing is not that, you know, unemployment rates 10% or 5% or whatever it is. It's that the rest of them, the other 90% have jobs. Like it's shocking how bad some people are out there. And it's just what it is, right? We're looking for a specific person. They need to fit the mold of what we do. They have to fit the mold at working at your speed and being your type of personality. They have to be an image of your business. There's a lot of things. So when we talk about bad people, they're not maybe bad. They're just not perfect fits for you. But how do you find greatness? How do you find that person? And I'll tell you, it all starts. If you get one thing out of this podcast, if you're listening, one piece, here it is. When you hire, you have to sell them on the job. The number one issue that people have for hiring is they put out an ad and just go, go to Indeed or LinkedIn or uh, not LinkedIn, Indeed, Monster, any of those places and just search a labor job or service job or anything and just read a few of them. They all read just like this. Must show up to work on time. Must be drug free. Can't do crack in the work trucks, whatever. Like all the stuff that they put into these ads just makes it sound like every other job. It didn't tell me why I want to work there. It just told me, wow, you got a lot of rules. Well, of course I know I got to show up on time. Must be a self-starter. Must be able to work well with others. Yeah, every person thinks that. There is not weeding anybody out by doing that. All it's doing is just setting a precedence of the same old, same old. Now, what if in your ad for employment, because people are always like, well, I got to put that that employment ad out there, you know, and I just got to let people know, like, I don't want to have anybody who, you know, the last guy that showed up, you know, he just, he was always late. You know, I put in there, you must not be late. No, nobody thinks you're going to be late. You didn't weed anybody out. But what if instead of that, instead of telling everybody the things they can't do, you told them the reasons they want to work with you. Man, we have an awesome environment. Like, yes, we work really well together. Our team is amazing. We handpick them ourselves. It's so much fun to do what we do. We get to see some awesome houses. We get to work outside. We get to work at our own pace while making people happy. Like, what if you put all of the things that are awesome instead of the things that are bad? One of the things I always talk about is building a culture, right? I always had a fridge stocked with Gatorade, waters, whatever the people liked. Um, I even had beer in the fridge for after work. Uh, we had ping pong tables and tournaments and uh, we threw parties and all that stuff. I wanted my environment to not be as much like work. I don't want people to show up and be like, oh, this, is, this is my job. Uh, I hate my job. We should talk about how much I hate my job. No one wants that. And I'll tell you, if you're not happy at a job, you're not going to be performing in general. You're just going to be thinking about how unhappy you are. So if I can create something that allows people to be happy and have an awesome work environment, but I can convey that, now all of a sudden... I'm getting a hundred applications and I'm getting work and applications and people applying that aren't, they're way overqualified. They are awesome. And I get to now make the decision because everybody wants to work. I had ads when I put them out there, my ads were so in tune to people that I've had probably four or five different people email me and say, Hey, I'm like, you know, I'm, you know, an oncologist or I'm a whatever. I'm not even, this isn't my field or anything, but I read your ad and it's awesome. I just wanted to put that out there. It's really awesome. Like they reached out to say that, which shocked me the first time, second, third. Like every time I put it out, I get people that send me messages. That means that people are reading it. And they're like, this place sounds awesome. If you're an awesome place to work for, people will want to go with you. And you're going to get this caliber of employee you've never seen before. If all of the employees you get are just dirtbag employees and they just do not, everyone you show up, none of them are worth a thing. They don't care about anything. Every time you talk to the, the, the people about the employees, it's like, oh, it's so hard to find people. It's not. It is not so hard to find people. 
it's hard to find good people. And how else would good people find you if your ad sucks? How else if it's that one where you must show up on time and no drugs, you must be able to work hard and, and not mind sweating and getting stung in the throat by bees. Like if you put that there, you have to have a really just dirtbag person be like, ugh, well, it's work. Let's do it. I got no other qualification. Like you are selling this job. And if you're selling it to the wrong person, you're getting the wrong person. Hiring is hard. I'll give you that. But there's some really amazing people out there if they want to work there. And here's the thing. Every job pays money. Every job pays money. Okay, let's take that out. Now, if every job pays money and just say every job was the same in the pay or at least close, why do I want to work at one place versus the other? Why do you think Google back in the day would put, you know, pool tables and ping pong tables and air hockey and video games and napping chambers and and segways and and why were their campuses always just look like just huge giant fun time things it's because they knew yeah money is money you can get money anywhere we pay well sure but we want to find a specific somebody now they have people who it was a thing people would oh my gosh i'm trying with google oh it's they were so excited to work there that the Best, brightest, awesomest people went there. That was how they grew. If you just have a, a spot that says, hey, like, don't smell like an armpit, can't smoke in the work trucks, we frown upon drug use, show up on time, don't be a piece of crap. Like, you're going to get a person who's like, oh, this place just sounds like a job. You're getting the caliber. So if you're hiring and everybody who's applying is garbage, it's not the position, it's the ad. You didn't sell it. So so look at that. That's a big one. I got to stop and, and let you know the shameless plug of the day, which by the way, the shameless plug works. So, But I am a rep for windowcleaner.com. The reason I do what I do is to help people in the way that I do it and exist and live and pay bills and eat and buy hair gel and you know fancy no brand sweatshirts is that you let me put your orders in. So I would love it if you were able to let me put your order in. All you have to do is text me or call me. 862-312-2026. Be like, yo, Jersey, everything is in my cart. Just click save this cart and it like saves it. Instead of clicking checkout, the button below it, above it says save this cart. Click that, shoot me a text. Big or small, we ship free over 49. So I hope it's over $49, but that's just for you. We do orders smaller than that. People go, oh, yeah, I don't want to bother you. But no, oh, I get credit for putting sales in. It's how I exist on this planet. So every order, I don't want to, I don't ever want to see you even have to put your own order in. I'll tell you this too. If you ever have like a sale or something and you're like, hey, I got to put this in because I want to make sure the sale, like, absolutely. If you text me and be like, yeah, I'll put my order in and the sale disappears in the next hour, you still get it because you already texted me. The texting like locks it in. And of course, I genuinely appreciate it and it's how I do what I do, so thank you for that. Shameless plug number two, if you haven't gotten a subscription yet to the American Window Cleaner Magazine, you're missing out on one of the most awesome things you could do for your business. It's business oriented. There's some amazing uh, articles and there is uh, pictures and new products and just everything that your competition is not seeing. Get a subscription, 69 bucks for the entire year. It's a real paper magazine, goes to your door every single month, and it's got stickers. So then you can be like, yo, I'm an actual window cleaner. Look at how proud I am of this industry. There's a culture to it. You have to be part of the culture. So get a subscription, do it for me. I'd appreciate it. Anyway, okay. So we talked about finding greatness. I wanna go and just talk real quick about the ad. When you do put the ad out there, we said, tell them the good things, not the bad things. When you put the ad out, tell them just like anything you're selling it. I, I, if you sell your window cleaning, you know why somebody should choose you. You don't tell somebody, hey, choose us for your window cleaning, but make sure that you're there on time. 
and uh, don't stand me up. And, uh, you know, I, I don't want you to, to complain about things and, 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 you know, make sure everything's away from you. Like, you don't do that. You tell them all the good stuff. So when we get into employment, we somehow think that we are at the top chain and we have to, like, kind of down talk. And that's not it at all. The same way you get people to buy from you is the same way you get people to work for you. Really, really, really something to think about. Okay. The hard part about hiring after it's all done or just if you are hiring at all, is that you also have to fire. Unfortunately, you can hire somebody that you think is great and they interviewed well and it was so awesome and oh my gosh, and then they work for you and you're like, what is this? Who is this? This is a real story, by the way. I had somebody who um, jumped in and uh, we did the interview, he was a great guy, man. We always would do a one day intro. Hey, go work with the crew, see how you vibe, see what you do, and if we like you, then we, we keep you, right? And uh, check your um, you know pay stuff, but usually under a certain dollar amount, then you don't have to have them register as employee. They could be a sub for the day, as long as you're under six, whatever. Do all that, it's tax stuff. And this guy jumped in, and he had uh, two things that, um, I was not, was not happy about, a few actually. But he jumps in, gets in the back seat, and hands each of the guys as they start pulling out in the work truck, pamphlets, full like, you know, full pamphlets about uh, legalizing marijuana and something else. That was the first thing he did within the first two minutes of being in the work truck. Now, if you do partake in the devil's lettuce that's cool like i don't care i don't even care that my employees do it as long as it doesn't come to my work i don't care what you do on your own like i don't own you forever i just want you when you show up to if i'm paying you for that time then it should be my time but do whatever you do on the side as long as it doesn't interfere what i do have a problem with is that you feel like on your own personal level that that is such a thing you came prepared with literature and you thought that instead of everything, the first thing you do is start talking about that, which is just super weird for everybody. And the entire drive is what you're talking about, trying to sell them about the uh, legalities and uh, the employment or the uh, governmental things. Super weird. Okay, well, maybe he's quirky. Then he puts on rubber gloves and says that his hands are, you know, uh, he can't get his hands wet. Uh, they're always bleeding and he has some kind of like, you know, blood born issue and if his hands get wet then they bleed and he, so he wears these gloves all the time and I thought well why would you be a window cleaner if you can't get your hands wet all right well there's another one. First job is he goes to set up a ladder and uh sets the ladder up and he steps back and goes okay well I just want you to kind of go up there and get a feel for it or whatever he goes no no I, I don't I don't I don't go on ladders and um they were like this is a window cleaning job have to do that sometimes he's like no 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 somebody else would do the ladder work i'm just and this was all within the first job the guy interviewed great but it was not good for the job he probably was a great guy but he did not show anything to me about that this is going to work that you're going to fit in with anything and you're just all instantly all of a sudden you can't do any of the stuff you're supposed to do so that was it for him now, having this, you have to let the guys go. It's called slow to hire, quick to fire. You have to be slow to hire the people, make sure that they're as good and right as you can, but you have to understand the fact that if somebody does not a fit with, this, with, the, with the crew, if they do not vibe, if they don't put out the same feeling that you do, they don't fit in. If they don't fit in, this isn't middle school, well, you like everybody. No, this is a business and it's my baby. If you don't fit in, and this just isn't something for you, I will let you go because I have to find somebody else. And this is the sad part is that a lot of people, they have employees and they go, ah, that guy's not great, but what are you going to do? You know, it's like, I need him. Really? If you need him that bad, then you need to hire today. Start hiring. Hire their replacement and swap them out. Like if somebody's got you by the short hairs that bad, then it doesn't matter what they do and you've lost control of your company. 
You're now, and I always say this dumb analogy, it could be the biggest dog or a tiger. Mike Tyson had a tiger. If you have a tiger on a thick enough chain, you can control it. You can walk them. The biggest dog you want. The biggest horse. It could be a Clydesdale. The thing is giant. A human can walk it. As soon as it pulls the leash out of it and there's no one controlling it, it is now up to the animal to do what the animal wants to do. If it decides to be still good, it stays around. If it doesn't, it runs off. If it decides to maul you, that's what animals do. You have to have control of your business. Otherwise, your business controls you. If it's just doing its thing and you got employees who just, ah, what am I going to do? You are not controlling your business. You now don't control the growth. You don't control the uh, vision. You don't control what people see of it. You don't control the experience. You don't control anything if you lose that. You have to be in control. This is your business. It's your vision. If you live or die, it's up to you. If you let somebody take that from you, you've lost all control of it. And now you're just, all right, well, I'm along for the ride. Hopefully this thing doesn't burn to the ground. So you have to understand that hiring comes with firing. And there are really good people that you would never in a million years think that you're going to fire. And then there are others that you're like, hey, this just isn't working out. I didn't know this because you interviewed very well and it's time to move on. Do not let, if you hire somebody is not a death sentence. I know people who uh, I work with that have done even something as simple as like, hey, you know what? This person doesn't fit in with everybody else as far as like everybody gets along really, really well. And then there's this person. And you go, well, did he clean windows really well? Yeah, but it doesn't matter. Cleaning windows doesn't matter. What matters is the experience the customer has. How does the company feel? How does everybody else work? If you have one bad employee, they say that the fastest way to lose a good employee is to tolerate a bad one. Everybody's been there. Like, I don't know why this person's still around. I got to work twice as hard because of the... Now you resent the company because of this person. You have to understand, you have to let people go if they're not working out. And that's why the always be hiring, ABH thing really comes in. Always have people in that pipeline. But the timeline for hiring is now. It is February when I'm recording this, but you have to have somebody hired before it becomes busy. Here's a cash 22. People go, well, I really wanna hire somebody you know, when spring comes. Okay, but then you're taking somebody who doesn't know what they're doing and putting them in when you're panicking getting everything done. Don't you want somebody to know what they're doing before that so they can actually help you? Well, yeah, but I don't have the money to pay them now. Right, but you do, obviously. Right, you have to hire soon enough that they can train. Hiring is expensive. It takes a lot to train somebody. People go, no, no, it's just you get them in, whatever. No, no, no. Until they're making that profit margin, it takes weeks. So the timeline could be upwards of four weeks to even get somebody up and running. Well, it's mid-February. Now, this if I hired today or started the process today, it's mid-March, end of March before things are, are running. People misunderstand the timing that it takes in hiring. If I decide right now I want to do this, I have to create my ad. Create my ad, have others look over it, adjust my ad create it that's taken a day or two perfect okay now i put it on there now it soaks people call come in um i do my phone interview but i have to get those applications as they come in i'm gonna have it sit there for a week maybe two see what we can get i'm doing those phone interviews now i'm setting up real interviews for the following week now i'm three weeks out i did two weeks of sitting with phone interviews and now my real interviews are starting on week three even if I hire in week three, I got my trial period going week three. They're not doing anything. They're just out there seeing if they vibe. If they fit well, great. Now I'm going to have them trained. I got two days 
of like hardcore training where they're not even doing jobs. They're just training. I got my, you know, videos and systems in the morning of the first day, then starting to implement the equipment and have them trying stuff on the second day, then, or on the uh, second part of the first day, then the second day altogether, they're going to go and start shadowing with people. Now I'm already three weeks out from when I started this process. They're not even, they're into training starting fourth week. Understand the timeline is always longer than you think in hiring. And if you're going to hire, it has to be now. Because in four to six weeks, they need to be ready to have production. In those four to six weeks, you're paying that. That's why it's expensive. And then if at four weeks you go, wow, this guy just is not working out. You fire him, all that money is wasted. It's gone. But that is what you have to do with, with, with hiring. It's expensive. But now is the time to do it. So if you're thinking about hiring or if you do hire, but you're like, I think I need somebody, when should the time be? Do it now, I'm telling you. And hopefully this episode helped you a little bit. If it did help you or if you're still here, if you're commenting on the WCR YouTube page, it's where we put our comments, by the way. I always do a secret word if you've made it this far. And uh, the, you know, we'll say the, the, the word of the day, start your comment off with the word fire. And if I see that, then I know you made it this far. And I'll tell you how awesome you are. But speaking of, I want to be awesome for you. So if you have a uh, order or would like a rep, I would love to be a rep. I mean, questions, orders, anything. That's what I do. Please keep my number. It's 862-312-2026. I'm the only jersey you probably know. So save that number. Please let me put your stuff in, uh, order things. You can literally save the card or just tell me, yo, I need like two 12 packs of rubber. This is what I need. And I can definitely get that in for you. So please do let me know. Um, also, awcmag.com. Get the subscription. Do it. It's awesome. And uh, I very much appreciate you being here. Until next week, go out there and start the hiring process for the year. But more importantly, go out and be epic.